So writing the question, writing the question. So here's how we write the questions, although we've spoken briefly about most of these. Write clear questions. Write clear questions. This is not about everyday conversations. I'm sorry we've done this one. The second one, question writing for a particular survey can start with some brainstorming. So just plan the thing on paper very nicely to make sure that you are dealing with what you want to deal with. A simple direct approach is actually the easiest. So keep your sentences, your statements as short and brief as you can have them. Not too lengthy. Then we spoke about vagueness, about providing a frame of reference, about, about avoiding negative words and double bare barrel sentences, double barrel questions, and now into measuring scales. Today. What is a measuring, measurement scale? It's those alternatives that you provide that will measure their responses, their behaviors. And there are different scales to use. Here they are. Here they are. Let's talk about this a bit. In the world of questionnaire design, which is mostly quantitative world, we have to look at data as numerical data. But numerical data actually can be qualitative or quantitative, although in quantitative research designs, we think that data is numerical. But some data, even data that I write here as qualitative data, nominal data, um, that isn't really quantitative. Sorry to really bubble a bit, but that's the truth. So we're going to spend some time now talking about data. The first thing about data is that it comes from a variable. Now a variable is something that takes on different values. So in quantitative research, we focus on variables and the links between variables. And a variable is something that changes over time. So every time you have an observation, it's going to be another one. That means it's a variable. There are two kinds of variables, discrete variables and continuous variables. Know the difference? A continuous variable means that the outcomes, the values that this variable can take on, are on the real line. So they are continuous options. From 0 to 100, with all decimals in between, would be a continuous variable, because all possibilities are possible. A discrete variable is one that takes on loose, isolated integer values. So a number of people in the room, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, not 1.1119. <laughs> so first thing to know about a variable is that it takes on discrete or continuous variables. And when you want to analyze data, you've got to know whether that variable was discrete or where it was continuous, because that changes the scheme of how you do the analysis. Discrete would be loose, isolated integer values, and continuous would be all possibilities on the, on the real line. That's the first point. The second point is that data can be divided as quantitative or qualitative, numerical data. Numerical data. We thought those would be numbers, but actually they are qualitative or quantitative. And this, they go into, oh sorry, why does it do this? It's just irritating. Oh, it's pure. It's succeeding. So the worst form of data is nominal data. So what I've done here is I've given this to you in increasing order of value. So with this, there's very little that you can do. And with a ratio scale of data, whatever that means, there's a lot that you can do. So you strive to get away from this and go to that. Right, that's where you want to end. And this is what they mean. Nominal data is nominal. It's nominal. So what does it do? It's data where your answers come back as yeses and noes. We know that. That's not good data. All you can do with that data is you can count how many yeses and how many noes. So as a measurement scale, when you use nominal data as your scale for your questionnaire, you are expecting yeses and noes as your answers back. Okay. Second one is ordinal data. It's 
slightly, slightly better than nominal data, but it still falls under quantitative data. In ordinal data, you have categories. You still don't have actual numbers, but at least you have categories. So you could say first degree burns, second degree burns, third degree burns. There's like a, a level, a categorization of the data, isn't there? We still can't do more than just counting how many in each category, but there's like a sense of improvement or ranking order in the data. The third one, now we get to the quantitative kinds of data. The third one is interval scale data. I'm going to leave that for last because it's easier to explain if I explain ratio scale data to you. The ratio scale data is normal ordinary numbers that we do normal ordinary calculations with. People's weight, people's age, people's salary, number of people in the room, normal ordinary numbers. You just never knew that you call that ratio scale thing, but that's what it is. So that's the best kind of data out of the four. Interval scale data, although it looks like numerical data, isn't really normal ordinary data. The reason being that the point zero is not a point of reference. Point zero is not a point of reference. Best example is degrees Celsius. If it's 10 degrees Celsius yesterday and it's 20 degrees Celsius tomorrow, I'm not allowed to say that it's twice as cold, or twice as hot tomorrow than it was yesterday. Because that 2 times 10 equal 20 doesn't have zero as a point of reference. So it measures up, it, it messes up the, the number system. Our normal number system has a point zero as a reference. It's got negative numbers in it and positive numbers. So we all know where we stand. We can multiply, we can double, we can subtract, subtract, we can do all those things with numbers. But in the interval scale data, we can't do that. Even in a quantitative domain, we sort of steal from the qualitative side and call our data qualitative because it doesn't really have a quantitative value. And there they are. Nominal data would be yeses and noes or hair color, so there's no ranking. There's just so many of this and so many of that. And we measure data in terms of what we can do with it. And there's very little you can do with that. So here I said, it's got no quantitative need. All you can do is determine the mode, which is the value that comes up the most, and calculate some frequency tables. So that's all. Very little use. The second one is ordinal data. So here at least there is a rank ordering. So there are levels of importance. And normally you can do rank ordering, median, mode, and percentiles for that. The next one is interval scale data. So here at least on interval scale data, we have zero as uh, an arbitrary. So zero isn't a point of reference. So it could be anywhere. So it's numerical, but there's little use because you can't really compare. And then ratio scale data. This is <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> ratio scale data, where it's normal numbers that you can do almost anything with. The problem lies in a Likert scale. So I actually spoke to you yesterday already about a Likert scale. Because the Likert scale really is an example of ordinal data. That's really what a Likert scale is. Why? Because if you think about it, the Likert scale is, uh -uh, I don't agree to yes, I absolutely agree. It's sort of ranking order of people's perceptions, not numbers, it's qualitative. We go and we superimpose numbers on top of people's opinions, which are not at all to absolutely so. But it's us that do that. So if you agree with me, and you might not, that because I put numbers on, what these numbers actually do is they give me a ranking. I can't say if somebody gives me a five, then that is five times as strong as the person who writes a one. I can't say that which means it's actually interval scale data. But I am superimposing numbers on actually people's opinions. 
So it's actually under ordinal scale, but I can't, can put it under interval scale. And when I put it under interval scale, I can see this as quantitative data. And the moment it's quantitative data, the door opens into quantitative techniques. So if you want to do that, when you are in quantitative techniques, you can use non-parametric statistics for that. Because non-parametric statistics is done for small samples and rank order data. Now I know one of you will be saying to me soon, but you always use normal statistics and inferential statistics for uh, Likert scale data. You would be wrong to do that. But I know it's done. The thing is, just I'm a purist. I don't like to play games with quantitative analyses. So all you can do with interval scale data, as Likert scale as interval scale data, is you can use non-parametric statistics for that which is that part of statistics that is dedicated to data from small samples, the normal requirements of normality are not there. And what you want to do then is do inferential statistics using the ranks of the numbers. But I have ranks now because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 7 if you like, are ranks. We are putting those ranks on the people's perception. So that's my story about this. <laughs>